Hey everyone, we all know there's billions of different life forms on the planet Earth. Everything from giant deep sea creatures to deadly yet beautiful plants. This planet has plenty of odd forms of life. So in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at 15 of the most unusual life forms ever discovered. Let's begin. Number 15, Saiga Antelope. Everyone knows about the majestic antelope. Whether they're sprinting across fields or just grazing there, they are some seriously beautiful animals. But there's one species that isn't so cute. In fact, it looks like it came from a completely different planet. Of course, I'm talking about the Saiga antelope. This antelope is found mostly in Russia, Kazakhstan, and Uzbekistan, while its most prominent characteristic being its huge, flexible, and floppy nose. And yeah, while it does look goofy, this giant nose serves a purpose, mainly to filter out the dust and regulate their blood temperature. It can cool things down in the summer months and then heat up the cold air during the winter before it enters their lungs. And the jury's still out on whether or not the Saiga antelope has a superhuman smell ability, but there's no denying that these are some seriously awesome animals. And sometimes beauty really is in the eye of the beholder. But in a sad turn of events, the Saiga antelope population has shrunk by almost 95% in the last 15 years, making them a critically endangered species. Number 14. Narwhal how old were you when you found out that unicorns weren't real? And how much did it break your heart? Well, cry no more because the narwhal is truly the unicorn of the sea, and there's nothing else like them on Earth. The unicorn horn of a narwhal is actually a tusk, not a horn, and is most commonly found in males. This enlarged, protruding tooth has a pretty amazing sensory capability, with about 10 million nerve endings inside, making it more like an antenna than a horn. And this horn can grow up to 10 feet long. And while the long tusk is an amazing sensory organ, it can also be used to stun small prey, making it easier for the narwhal to catch and feed on them. But it also serves one more important purpose, a secondary sex organ. The bigger the tusk, the higher up on the hierarchy the male narwhal is, and therefore the more likely he is to get a mate. Think of it as the mane of a lion or the feathers of a peacock. Number 13. Colugo Birds aren't the only members of the animal kingdom that can fly about. Certain species of lemurs have joined in the fun as well. The colugo, or flying lemur, is a primitive little gliding mammal found only in Southeast Asia and very specific places in the Philippines. And just like the flying squirrel, the colugo doesn't flap its wings and fly, but instead glides, using the same long, thin membrane that connects its limbs. But unlike the flying squirrel, the colugo's membrane connects its tail to its limbs as well, giving them an extra advantage when the time comes to make a quick, slick aerial maneuver. And although they live up in the trees high above anything that can eat them below, the colugo are terrible climbers because of their webbed toes. These guys are much better off in the air where they can glide for a distance of 200 feet without losing any altitude. But perhaps even more importantly, they're just so damn cute with their tiny ears and giant eyes that just kind of melt your heart. Plus, it's not uncommon to see a mother's young attached to her undersides as she flies through the air as well. Number 12. Nudibranch there are over 3,000 recorded species of sea slug, but the nudibranch has got to be one of the most incredible and most intriguing. They can be found in either shallow or deep waters from the north and south poles and over to the tropics. So yeah, they're versatile, but much like their name implies, they're naked. So while the nudibranch lacks any type of protective shell, it's incredibly colorful, allowing it to camouflage amongst the beautiful reefs. But they're better known for their use of chemical defenses. Many nudibranches feed on toxic sea sponges, absorbing and assimilating the toxic cells into their own body and using them against predators. That's pretty cool. And some nudibranches will even secrete their own natural toxin in the form of mucus when disturbed by aquatic predators. But their adaptations depend on where in the world they live. Although they're absolutely beautiful and look harmless, it's best not to touch one of these naked slugs in the wild. Number 11. Green Sea Slug Claiming the 11th spot on this list is none other than the Green Sea Slug. This Green Sea Slug is a strange little beast, incorporating the genetic material from the algae that it eats into its own DNA. So yeah, talk about you are what you eat. It's one of the few animals on Earth with this characteristic, and floats about in the oceans looking like a big green plant. But because the slug feeds on plants, it uses photosynthesis to create its own nutrients as well, which is what gives it its bright green color. Scientists have even called it the emerald green Alicia. So instead of being the product of two different animals, the green sea slug is made up of everything, everywhere, all at once. 
It's pretty insane and still baffling scientists around the world. Research is still underway as to how the green sea slug is able to do what it does, and as of yet this amazing slug is the only successful instance of gene transfer from one type of complex organism into another. You'll typically find these guys hanging out in the shallows of tidal or salt marshes and creeks, so the next time you're hanging around in those areas and see some bright green leaves floating about in the water, there's a chance that it's actually a green sea slug hiding in plain sight. Number 10. Honduran White Bat Bats tend to get a pretty bad rap, but these creatures of the night aren't all that scary. In fact, some of these guys are just downright adorable. And the Honduran White Bat may just be the cutest of them all. These little guys are only found in Central America, and despite their name, they turn up in eastern Nicaragua, Costa Rica, and western Panama. Sometimes also referred to as the white tent-making bat, these small leaf-nosed bats roost in the folds of what to them are giant leaves. But they're pretty easy to spot with their bright yellow wings, ears, nose, and of course their white fur. But interestingly enough, the Honduran white bat is the first mammal known to incorporate carotenoids, red, orange, and yellow pigments, into their skin. They get these colors from their exclusive diet of fruit, giving a new meaning, again, to you are what you eat. These bats are social and live in colonies, roosting in numbers between 2 and 15 at a time. But because they're so small, the Honduran white bat has a high metabolism and needs to eat constantly, so they'll spend most of the night feeding on their favorite food, figs. Unfortunately, though, the Honduran fruit bat is also a nearly endangered species, with deforestation being their biggest threat. Number 9. Fried Egg Jellyfish With one of the sillier names in the animal kingdom, the Fried Egg Jellyfish is a very large jellyfish from the family of Phacelophora and is recognizable thanks to looking just like a cracked egg with the yolk sunny side up. Some of these eggy jellyfish can have a bell up to two feet in diameter, so despite the name, they're much larger than the breakfast food of their namesake. These jellies typically float about in the warmer waters of the world, particularly in the Mediterranean Sea. This jellyfish can usually be found eating both plankton and smaller jellyfish, collecting them in their tentacles and bringing them into their mouth for digestion. But because of their limited motion, they mostly drift along with the current, even when they are swimming, and will often use suspension feeding as their main food gathering strategy. But these marine animals will often develop a symbiotic relationship with larval crabs, in which the crabs will feed on parasites within the jelly's bell, and in turn, the crab gets a free ride as they sit on top of the yolky bell, and sometimes even within the tentacles. However, as the crab gets older, larger, and requires more food to keep it going, it turns on its host and will begin to devour the jellyfish. Number 8. Hydnora if you're hiking around in South Africa and you run into the Hydnora, don't freak out. Although it may look like some sort of sinister sci-fi creature, it's just a plant, I promise. The Hydnora grows almost completely underground, only exposing its flower to the rest of the world. But the flower is shaped especially to maximize the efficiency of its bristles to direct beetles right into the center. But how exactly can a plant lure a beetle into its maw? Well, the center of Hydnora smells like poop. It's really as simple as that, and the beetles are definitely into that sort of thing, especially the dung beetles, for obvious reasons. And sure enough, they'll walk right in there. But despite all of this, the Hydnora doesn't actually eat the beetle. Instead, it closes down on them and virtually holds them hostage while covering them in their pollen. When the time is right, the plant will release the prisoner back into the wild in the hopes that it will find a Hydnora of the opposite sex. But once they're pollinated, the Hydnora will bear fruit that's similar in taste and texture to a potato. Number 7. Giant Sunfish Imagine going for a swim in the warm tropical waters only to have an encounter with one of the biggest, freakiest looking fish you've ever seen. Sunfish are harmless, yet massive fish that traverse the depths of our oceans. And one was caught in 1996 off the coast of Japan that really threw scientists and researchers for a loop. This sea beast weighed in at a staggering 5,000 pounds. Scientists originally thought that this was a species of sunfish called Mola Mola, and that this specimen in particular was an anomaly. But the Mola Mola on any given day has somewhat of a flat appearance. But these gentle giants are enormous nonetheless, and can still grow to colossal sizes on a normal day. They also have bony skeletons, which makes them, generally speaking, the heaviest fish in the sea, and can grow to be 10 feet long. If any normal person were to encounter one in the wild, there's no shame in swimming for your life at first glance. And while many scientists thought they had the identity of this 5,000-plus-pound fish pinned down, there were some that were still left scratching their heads. 
they did a little extra digging and concluded that they had in fact discovered a new species of sunfish, which they classified as Mola alexandrini. This scientific finding leads researchers to believe that there are even more species of sunfish than have been recorded as of yet, meaning there are even more of these monsters lurking in the depths waiting to be found. That is, if they don't find you first. Number 6. Maned Wolf Wolves make for one of the coolest animals on the planet. They hunt in packs, can smell your blood, and save the hearts and livers of the kill for the alpha. But this entry on our list is a little different in every way, and despite its namesake, it's not even a wolf at all. The maned wolf doesn't howl, it doesn't travel in packs, and it hunts all on its own. It's got a small and long head with a pointed snout, big ears with some pretty thick red fur. The maned wolf is the largest canid animal in South America, and has scientists all around the world completely baffled. They simply don't know what it is. Its long and gangly legs are actually an evolutionary adaptation for its high grassland environment to get the best possible view of its prey below. I'm talking about rodents, lizards, eggs, and even roots and fruits. Despite the maned wolf's name, they're a little less exciting, but their mystique still makes them pretty damn cool in their own right. And the maned wolf can run pretty fast too, only it never really resorts to doing so. Maybe a quick gait at best. It is a strange beast for sure, with its wolfish and fox-like features. It's able to defy the laws of nature, but I think it's pretty cool. Number 5. Nomura's Jellyfish there are life forms out there that look like they came from another planet, and this next entry is one of them. When they're fully grown, the Nomura can be taller than a human, with a diameter of about six and a half feet and weighing up to 440 pounds. They are absolutely huge. These giant jellies can be found in the waters between China and Japan, primarily in the Yellow Sea and the East China Sea. Their population blooms appear to be increasing as time goes on, but they've seen their largest rate of increase within the last two decades. Some possible reasons for the rapid growth are climate change as they thrive in warmer waters, overfishing, and coastal modification, with the latter of the two adding to the substrate for asexually producing polyps. Aside from their sheer size, Nomura's jellyfish are characterized by their translucent white bodies and pinkish or red capulets and oral arms. But these jellies have grown to be so large and so abundant that in 2009, an 11-ton fishing trawler capsized off Chiba in Tokyo Bay as the humble three-person crew tried to haul a net containing dozens of these giant jellies and needed a swift rescue from fellow fishermen. Number 4. Bleeding Tooth Plant If you couldn't already tell by the name, this one may not be for the faint of heart. The Bleeding Tooth Plant is a type of fungus that looks like it's straight out of a horror movie but in reality this unusual mushroom hails from the Pacific Northwest. The bleeding tooth plant earned its name from its pale white flesh with deep red pores that ooze out a thick red fluid. And if for some crazy reason you do feel like getting up close and personal with this scary fungus, if you turn it over you'll find that the base is studded with small mean looking spines. But unsurprisingly the bleeding tooth plant isn't dangerous and may have some health benefits for humans brave enough to eat them and it's only the young ones that have that ghastly appearance. As they mature, they develop a more brown and shriveled appearance. The substance is a type of sap that's forced out of the fungus by excess absorption of water, and oddly enough, you can find the bleeding tooth plant in different climates all over the world, from North America to the Middle East and even in parts of Korea. And luckily, they like to hide amongst the moss in the shadier parts of the forest, so the odds of you seeing one out in the open and getting scared are pretty slim. Number 3. Giant Pacific Octopus Octopi, they're some of the most stunning life forms around, and with about 300 known species, it's hard to choose just one. But the Giant Pacific Octopus in particular is one of the most unique and has evolved to partake in one of the more unusual maternal practices. It's tough to be a mom, and the more you have, the harder the job becomes. But what about when you give birth to a lot of kids all at once? It's no secret that some animals can lay hundreds or even thousands of eggs at once, but the giant Pacific octopus is laying around 50,000 eggs at a time. The female giant Pacific octopus will be pregnant for about four or five months before birthing her 50,000 eggs over the course of a month or so. Each egg is laid individually and floats freely away in the water before she catches every one of them with her eight long motherly arms and starts to stitch them together into what looks like hanging beads in a hippie apartment. She creates her den ideally in a cave away from the world so she can tend to her offspring in peace and away from predators like crabs, sea stars, and fish. She's going to make almost 200 of these braids and let them hang from the roof for nearly six months, each egg no larger than a grain of rice. 
and during this time so as not to attract any predators and parasites she doesn't eat. All that matters are her 50,000 unborn children, and when the time is right and the temperature of the water is perfect, she'll push the egg braids from the den, allowing them to float to the surface. The mother usually dies in the process due to exhaustion and lack of oxygen, and in the end, two out of the 50,000 eggs may survive. All of that hard work for just two eggs. Talk about the world's greatest mom. Number 2. Tufted Deer when we think of deer, we typically think of cute little animals grazing about in the grasslands. We think of something like Bambi, but that's not really the case with the tufted deer. This unusual species of deer is easily identified by the prominent tuft of black hair on the forehead and, well, yeah, the male's canine teeth that look like fangs. Were these deer crossbred with vampires hundreds of years ago? Well, no, because the males of the species grow such lame antlers, they use their fangs to compete for females instead. Because they can grow to be over an inch in length, these deer fangs serve as a pretty formidable weapon during mating season, and can even fend off medium-sized predators at a pinch. And because when an animal has teeth that protrude out from their mouths, they're technically tusks, but saying these deer have fangs is a lot more fun. And while these tusk-bearing deer do like to keep to themselves, they of course still come across one another in the wild here and there. And when that does happen, they can communicate each other with typical noises like barks, whines, and whistles. But they can also use a series of clicks when encountering someone or something new. The tufted deer are found mainly in China and Tibet, and they are a solitary animal that's sadly in danger of becoming extinct due to both habitat loss and deforestation and hunting which is why many of them are living in captivity to promote genetic diversity through breeding programs. Number 1. Tardigrade Gaining popularity in recent years, tardigrades are some of the most unusual life forms on the planet, and it's not hard to see why. Also known as water bears, these microscopic life forms are just one millimeter in size and live in a variety of habitats worldwide, from damp moss to flowering plants, in the sand, in freshwater, and in the ocean. These little guys have been able to adapt to just about every ecosystem possible, making them unlike anything we've ever seen. The most unusual yet remarkable feature of tardigrades is their ability to withstand extremely low temperatures and extreme drying. During these normally deadly conditions, they'll go into a state of suspended animation, in which their body dries out, curls into a ball, and their metabolism drops down to less than 0.01% of its normal rate, and they can survive in this state for years before returning to normal. Scientists and researchers have actually had a lot of fun with tardigrades over the years, pushing their bodies to the limit to see what else they're capable of. One of these experiments happened in 2007, when they became the first known animal to survive in outer space. Tardigrades, some dehydrated and some not, were taken into low Earth orbit and exposed to the hard vacuum of outer space and solar UV radiation for 10 straight days. When they made it back down to Earth, almost 70% of the specimens were protected from solar radiation and reanimated in just 30 minutes. Now there's even speculation as to how the tardigrade would fare on Mars, and no one can really know for sure, but it's quite possible that tardigrades will outlive us all. I'll see you next time. Watch our Animals playlist for more Top 15 videos about animals. Sit back, relax, and binge watch all of our best animal-related videos.